Una creencia fundamental para el cristianismo es que nosotros podemos confiar en la Biblia, que creemos que la Biblia es la palabra de Dios. Eh, y de ahí se desprende también la, la doctrina de la inerrancia. Pero ¿por qué nosotros como cristianos? ¿Cuál es la base para, para esa creencia? ¿Por qué nosotros podemos decir que la, que la Biblia es confiable e incluso inerrante? I think when it comes to trusting the Bible, generally speaking, there are two issues to look at. One is how do we know that the Bible we have today was the Bible as it was originally written? In other words, what is the process through history that led to the manuscripts leading to the translations and things that we have today? And that science of studying how the Bible came down through history is known as textual criticism, text having to do with the manuscripts. So we look at the number of manuscripts the Bible was written that still exist today, and we glean from those the, a, a, a reading uh, from which, in the Greek and Hebrew, from which we translate into Spanish or English or whatever the language is. So it's an incredibly enriching study to see how meticulous the scribes were in transcribing how many of these manuscripts are and how close to the originals we still have existing manuscripts. One of the lessons that we learn is when we compare the New Testament, let's take for an example, to other documents written at a similar period of in history. And these other documents are documents from which many universities would do ancient studies, how we study Roman history or Greek history or whatever. And very seldom are those histories ever, ever doubted. But when you compare how much more evidence we have to the New Testament in terms of number of manuscripts, versus the length of time between when it was originally written and the, and the most ancient copies we have of the original, the comparisons are just amazing because there are very few manuscripts of most ancient historians in comparison to the Bible. Most of those are anywhere from uh, 10, 20, maybe as many as 600. Whereas with the New Testament, we have close to 6,000 manuscripts of the New Testament. And with the ancient writers, the length of time between the originals, which no longer exist, and the oldest copies is anywhere from uh, several hundred years to several, almost to over a thousand years. Whereas with the New Testament, we get very close within almost the first generation of writers as to how far back it goes. So that gives us reasons to know that its transmission through history has remained intact. But the second issue that's relevant to the question is why should we believe what they wrote is true? Because after all, someone could write a novel 2,000 years ago, and we have an accurate copy, but it doesn't mean what happened in the novel is true. Mm. So there what we do is we look at, really, what are the evidences of eyewitness testimony? We find things in the New Testament, for example, they, they write in a way that what they wrote was embarrassing for them. And you would say, why would somebody write? For example, the disciples admit that sometimes they didn't understand what Jesus was saying. The best explanation of why they would say that in their own writings is that's what really happened. They were just being truthful. Sometimes Jesus said things that we still sometimes today not sure we understand why he said it. Why was he seemingly not concerned about the woman who committed adultery? Why didn't he condemn her like the law of Moses? And people thought maybe that sounded like he didn't believe the law of Moses. And you go, why would they put that in? Because it seemed like he was soft on adultery. And you go, the best reason to explain why they wrote what they wrote is because that's just what really happened. And time after time, we find that they pass the test of how we evaluate eyewitness testimony. So that's why I think we can come to a reasoned conclusion. The Bible not only is the way it was really written that we have today, but also that what it says is actually true. From there, we can build a case for who is Jesus with this historical evidence and prove from the evidence that Jesus was who he claimed to be, that he was the Son of God. And then we look at, well, if he's the Son of God and he has the authority that he does, what does he say about the very Bible we're talking about? And we find that Jesus not only regarded what we now call the Old Testament as the Word of God, but we also see how he predicted that the New Testament would be written. He told the disciples in John 14, 15, and 16, that the Holy Spirit was going to come and lead them into all truth, and he was going to do three things. He was going to bring to their remembrance all things that he said to them. He was going to teach them all things, and he was going to show them things to come. Those happen to be the three literary divisions of the New Testament. Bring to your remembrance all things I said are history. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. 
teach you all things is the, what is in Greek called the didactic, the teaching. That's Romans through Jude. And then show you things to come is prophecy. That's revelation. So in John 14, 15, 16, Jesus pre-authenticates the writing of the New Testament. If we conclude then that the New Testament was written uh, and Jesus regards it as the word of God, then for arguments that we could go on to give, we know it must be inerrant because it's the word of God. Thank <laughs> you.